Milton Corey here, and welcome to this edition of Principal Truth. Today we're beginning with a quote from B.C. Forbes, the founder of the Forbes magazine empire. He said, He is a wise man who seeks by every legitimate means to make all the money he can honestly. For money can do so many things that are worthwhile in this world, not merely for oneself, but for others. But he is an unmitigated fool who imagines for a moment that it's more important to make money than it is to make it honestly. One of the advantages of possessing money is that it facilitates one's independence and mental attitude. The man head over heels in debt is more a slave than the independent. I'll give you something to think about, but honesty is... Well, it's more way, way beyond anything that would be politically correct. Honesty is the key. It really is. And what I'd like to talk about today is stocks. What are stocks? No, 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 no. I know you got a mental, some of you have a mental image of people caught in stocks, uh, like they were, they were punished during uh, very olden times when somebody did something that was uh, bad or criminal. They were locked in a, in a stock, and the stock was a, a thing that held them in place in the village square. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. No, I'm talking about stocks, equity, owning a piece of, of the action. Let's see if we can understand what a stock is. The most common thing you hear about, you hear about stocks and bonds, okay? And then later on, you hear about mutual funds. Well, a stock literally is owning a small portion of an entity, a corporation, typically. Uh, that's what stocks are. So when, uh, let's say that uh, way back when, when, when uh, Hewlett and Packard got together in their garage and they said to themselves, well, let's see if we can't make a, a great copy or, what, or a printer or whatever it was that their technology was that they, they specifically developed. Well, they started off uh, probably using equity in their homes and, and maybe getting some, some money from relatives and friends. But at some point, they were able to uh, not only incorporate, but they were able to get to the point where they had sufficient revenue and sufficient track record or powerful enough idea, all of these things probably in conjunction uh, together. And they were able to go and offer stock. Now, stocks are, as I said, they're equity, but what do I mean by offer? Usually, when a, a company offers a new stock or they're a new company and they're in the process of looking to raise money, they will go through the IPO market. And I'll explain that in a moment, but I want to get back to the concept of stocks. We've talked a little bit in the past, and you can look on the website and you'll see a section uh, uh, on bonds, but stocks are a little different. The problem that many businessmen had in the very early, early beginning of this country was that they had difficulty getting money on a long-term basis because back then banks only loaned money for very short periods of time. So they decided, they, a group of, uh, of pioneers back in, in New York, way, way, way back when, got together under what was called the Buttonwood Tree. And it was actually a Buttonwood Tree down in uh, down in the area of Wall Street, what has become a great uh, cement jungle of Wall Street. And they decided that they would form the original stock market because they wanted to raise money that they could have for a long-term basis. So they, the gentlemen who were under the buttonwood tree, are the ones who actually originally began the concept of stock and the stock market here in what became the United States of America. So. Why did they do this? Well, they did this because when you buy a stock, what you're doing is you are literally saying to the XYZ corporate, let's, let's use Hewlett Packard, for example. You're saying to them, well, I believe in you and I believe that the value of your corporation is going to increase. And I believe also that you're going to be paying me a dividend. Some stocks don't pay dividends, but we'll get into what different types of stocks are in another discussion. So. Hewlett Packard issues stock, you buy the stock. All right, now you've got a stock, you've got a, a fractional interest 
in that company. And let's say that that company, when they, when they first offered stock, let's say they offered a million shares. I don't know what they offered. But let's say that they did offer, in that initial stock offering, a million shares of stock. Well, that means that uh, if you bought one share, you own one millionth of the corporation. What that gives you is the privilege of owning that stock, and by your buying it, you have transferred your money to that corporation. No longer is it yours because you received a piece of paper which says that it's, it's a, a fractional interest or a share in Hewlett Packard. Now, as time passes, you can go to a stockholders meeting, and assuming that you have a common stock. And as I said, I'll get into the different common, preferred, and all the other types of stocks in another discussion. I just want you to understand the basics right now. So you will ultimately be able, if you are a stockholder in any particular corporation of size, public corporation that is, you will be able to go to a stockholders meeting. But what you've done by transferring or by taking money and buying a share of stock is you now actually own a piece of that corporation. And why did you do that? Well, you did it because you basically believe in that corporation or you believe in whoever gave you the advice that, that you should purchase that stock. But the key is you now own a fractional interest in that corporation. And as time passes, if you watch it and you get to a certain point in your life where maybe you need some money for some purpose or maybe it's in your 401k and you're now looking to convert from something that's building equity, which is what stock does, to uh, building value, equity value, to uh, money to spend on something, then, well, you can turn around and sell that stock. And typically, there will be, through our stock market system, there will be somebody out there who will be interested in buying your share of Hewlett Packard, paying whatever the going market rate is. That's how these things happen. They're, they are priced not by an individual person, but by the, whatever the market uh, says that people are willing to pay to buy something from someone. Simplistically, again, owning stock is you're actually owning a fractional interest in the corporation that issued the stock. Typically, the stock that you will own if you're buying stock from a stockbroker or wherever will be public stocks, a stock that's issued to the public. There's another type of stock, and oh, well, there's a lot of others. And I will go into that other another time, but I just wanted to, and I know, forgive me for some of you out there who say this is too basic, I just wanted people to understand that stock is owning equity while bonds are owning debt. And there are all different types of, types of stocks and all different types of bonds, and we'll get into that at another time. If you would like to know more about the area of stocks and bonds and uh, other investments and real estate and insurance and annuities and uh, what's the best motivator for an employee or whatever, take a look at our website. It's principletruth.net. That's P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L-T-R-U-T-H dot net. Take a look there and you will find links that will take you to various sources of knowledge and information, which I believe will be extremely helpful to you. And if you'd like to participate in a program, you can simply email me your questions. Just email me, Milton Corey, at info at principletruth.net, principletruth.net, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you for listening to this segment. Understand that there are many other archive segments about different things. Hope you learn a little bit about what a basic stock is. Take care. Thank you.